the nation's first rally for people of color who are atheists. Today in the Atheist Viewpoint, The Secular Blackout, Part 1. Hello, I'm David Silverman, President of American Atheists, and thanks for joining us today. The Secular Blackout was the first ever atheist event geared toward people of color. And it happened in New York just a couple of days ago, and American Atheist was there. American Atheist sponsored, was a major sponsor of the event. And uh, we were all there, and we had some great opportunities to gain some great interviews from people of color within the atheist movement. Today on The Atheist Viewpoint, we'll be looking at part one of those interviews. So, I'm here talking to Jamila Bay. Hi, Jamila. Hello, David. It's How a pleasure. Doing? Great. Uh, thanks for talking to me. So, uh, tell me a little bit about this event and why you're here. Uh, black non-believers of Atlanta and Black Atheists of America, for the first time in history, decided to have a Black Atheist rally. And uh, I thought that that was an awesome idea. I thought that was a, a wonderful thing to do, particularly in this era of over-religioned politics, to invent a word that doesn't exist. Um, for me, this is a political act. I'm showing up, I'm supporting, and uh, I'm very glad they did this. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad they did it, too. Why do you think it's important to have events just for black people? Well, I don't particularly think it is important to have events just for black people, because um, that's exclusionary. Everybody's welcome. Um, I think it's important that a larger secular movement sees that there are African Americans who put on events and, and do things and everyone's welcome and to have a good time um, sort of expanding your mind looking for speakers you might not have used before someone who you don't know you don't know of them but they have a, a, a an audience you know they have a voice so uh, that's important anything that's going to get more eyes and different eyes brought to who's in this movement and what are our concerns that's only a good thing so tell me a little bit about what your concerns are Ah, oh, that's a good one. I'm, I'm deeply concerned at uh, the way the tax structures benefit religion. Um, you know, I, I think that's important when you look at communities that have no investment in them, but they've got plenty of tax-exempt churches and places where their schools are poor. Um, that's a big issue for me. I also really uh, am concerned, sickened, and terrified at the fact that uh, our politicians are giving exemptions, religious exemptions, to hospitals and whatnot. Um, I live in an area where Catholic hospitals are about to be the majority, uh, and we know what that does to women's health. We know what that does to a woman's choice, not just in whether or not to carry a pregnancy to term, but how she's going to deliver, whether she's going to induce, when she's going to induce. Um, these are things that are affect me and they affect my body and they affect my life and they affect the lives of my sisters, they affect the lives of my friends and uh, I, I have to be aware of that, I have to speak out about that. Those are my issues. Um, at, that's the tip of the iceberg. We can get to, you know, privileging and words and government oaths or whatever. That's on the list but it's, it's right now the stuff that, uh, the stuff that's killing people in some cases, that, that's what I'm looking at. So were you always an atheist or did you used to be religious? How did you end up as one? I was always an atheist. I tried to pretend, I tried to buy religion, but it never made sense to me. I never saw any proof of it. So I guess I was born an atheist. I pretended for a while and I went back to the default setting. 
what religion did you grow up in? Uh, I was ro I was raised Roman Catholic, and uh, yeah, it seems like everybody I went to school with either is an atheist or is pretending to not be an atheist. Did you go to Catholic school? Oh yeah, All, uh, even through college. Uh, every, with the exception of six, seven, eight, every grade I was in school or university was Catholic. Yeah, it seems like uh, Catholic school kind of has a reputation for turning people into atheists. Would you say that's true? Absolutely. Catholic schools do teach you to think, and they do teach you to be critical. And, you know, if, if you're a Catholic child and you've only got one sibling, or, you know, or you notice your Catholic friends who only have one sibling, um, it becomes really obvious that Catholics aren't adhering to their doctrine, but they do have good schools. And for the most part, they do have wonderful hospitals. I just am worried about the encroachment on my right to be treated in a way that's not in accordance with what the Pope is sending out of Rome. So why do you think people uh, tend to uh, care so much about the appearance of being religious if they don't really believe it? I wish I knew. I guess as a kid who never fit in, you know, I, I learned to be different and enjoy flying my freak flag. But, uh, you know, we are we are group animals. We are pack animals. And, and our group identity, in some cases, supersedes the importance that we hold for our own uh, identity. And that group identity, particularly when you look at African Americans, um, is believed outside of the group. So it becomes a story that you want to make sure it's true. It's a good story. There's nothing wrong with being a God-fearing, faith-based people. Um, so when those folks who might be interested in thinking a different way um, let themselves be known, there is a very, real, a very real risk that they'll be shunned, they'll be dismissed, their group identity will be taken from them. Uh, she's not black, she's an atheist. I've heard that a number of times. And uh, it, it's hard. It's hard for anybody coming out. Um, but it's also necessary. And you find that there are a lot more of us than you think there are. And uh, in terms of people who actually believe that there's an invisible man in the sky who, if you ask hard enough and in earnest enough, he'll like rescue your baby from a burning building. The people who actually have that kind of faith, the, the, those folks, they're a slight minority of any of us. And those are the people who should be, you know, trying to justify their numbers and not us. We're, we're far bigger than anyone, uh, any organization is giving credit for us being. Yeah, I agree. Um, so I think uh, it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, that uh, you're a great role model for this community, and I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Well, I also role model for girls, <laughs> as well as boys, who I'm sure you're referencing. Um, but yeah, it's, I thank you. It's, it's a humbling thing to consider. Um, I'm just a loud mouth who's not going to shut up when I see something wrong. Okay. Well, thanks very much for talking to me. And uh, this was Jamila LeBay. Thanks very much. Thank you so much. People were asking me, well, who are you all? I mean, you're black, atheist, non-believer. Thank you. Who are you? You know, I'm going to, um, for all of you all for, that are curious, I hope, you know, maybe straddling the fence or don't quite know who we are, I hope I speak for the majority when I explain who, who we are exactly. You know, free thinkers like us, we can make a difference because we've decided to move on. But before I tell you who we are, you remember that movie, The Poseidon Adventure? You remember that? In the 70s, I know I'm dating myself, but you remember that movie, The Poseidon Adventure? The ship capsized, right? And so what were the majority of the people doing? What, what were they saying? They were saying, well, let's wait. Let's wait on help to get here. And there was a small group of people, which really kind of represents us a little bit. There was a small group of people saying, no, help is not coming. This ship has capsized, and if it's turned upside down, that means we got to go up to get out of here. They were the people that escaped. We are the ones here that realized our ship has capsized. That means we have to change our paradigm. And what is our paradigm? Our paradigm is the model, the pattern that forms the basis of what we believe. That's not working. Tomorrow is Sunday. Guess what's going to happen tomorrow? 
20 to 25 million dollars are going to get sucked out the black community and go to these churches. How many people, you know, embrace physics and astronomy? Okay, then you know what a black hole is, right? A black hole is a, 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 a gap or a, a, I can't explain it like a physics can, but it occurs when a supernova, a star explodes. And it creates a hole with a gravitational pull that's so great that light can't even escape. That's what churches represent in our communities, black holes. Okay, that the light from our mind is being sucked into it. You know, anything that gets close to a black hole will be sucked up. So, you want to know why we're doing so poorly. Have you noticed that as more churches come in the black community, the worse off we get? The more of the mega churches, the worse things get. And you know why? Because they're black holes. They're sucking the light from our minds. You're going to church hearing the same thing you've been hearing since you was five years old. You know. So we have, we are representing those who have decided to embrace the intellectual side of life. Okay. White folks that are here, listen. We're not we're not asking for equality. We can't. How are we going to be equal? When you, you know, we're 400 years behind to start with. And the second thing about equality, I've never understood that. We want equal rights. Listen, if I break in your home and I steal your gold and I steal your oil and I steal your diamonds and I steal your resources, how then do you expect me to turn it, turn around and share it amongst you e e equally? Does that make sense? I'm not going to take anything, steal from you. They enslaved, black people were enslaved. Let's put it like that. So they're not going to turn around and say, okay, I enslaved you for 400 years. Now, here, let me divide these things amongst you equally. So we're not asking for that. We know the black folks that you see here in this event tonight, today, we know that it's on us to make a change. We know that. Okay. Can you tell me your name and uh, the organization? My name is Marissa Langseth. I am from the Philippine Atheist and Agnostic Society. I am the founder and the chairwoman. Okay. Uh, thanks for speaking with me. I appreciate it. So tell me a little bit about religion in the Philippines and why you started this organization. Religion is very, very strong in the Philippines. In fact, it's very influential. It is getting into our politics and the LGBTs and women's and everybody's rights. I think um, PATAS is still at its, at its fledgling uh, stage right now, but we hope to um, put a dent in the religious landscape of the Philippines. It is very strong, it's like 80 to 97 percent. They remain religious until now. So in short, they're still in the Bronze Age. Yeah. <laughs> what, what religion are most people in the Philippines? They are mostly Roman Catholics okay. and of course Christianity, but they have so many sects. Mm -hmm. And of course, they are mostly money-making in the Philippines. Why do you think religion is so influential there? It is very influential because we were enslaved by Spain, by the white people, so-called they say, because we are in, in the rally and they're talking about that. We were under them for 333 years, so that is why they have a very good grip. So traditionally, everybody is like Catholic or Christian in the Philippines. I used to be Christian. I used to be Catholic. Yeah. How did you end up becoming an atheist? Well, when I discovered science in grade five, um, I became a skeptic. I was one of those who, who ask questions all the time and nobody can answer my question. But you know, in the Philippines, you have to be um, like them. You know, you have to conform with the society in order to be accepted. But when I came to America, I, I'm, I've always been asking questions and uh, really, 
my, I, I am a humanist by heart ever since, and then I just became an atheist. So what, what label do you use mostly? Do you call yourself an atheist or a humanist first? I call myself militant atheist. You know why? Because I founded Pathos. Otherwise, if you are just an atheist or a humanist, you cannot really found anything that, that we would want to make a difference in the Philippines. So I call myself militant atheist. Uh, it's interesting that uh, people use the term militant atheist. I mean, obviously, it's it's not that you know we take up arms the way a military does. Um, so, what kind of activism do you do? Well, for me, militancy is just being active, just like what you said, just being active and uh, being an activist and and educating people and trying to really make a difference in, in, in our society. We, we cannot be apathetic, you know, apathetic or, or how do you call this, apatheist. We cannot be in that position, otherwise there'll be no change. We, we've tried that before. A lot of organizations in the Philippines tried that. It did not work. So this is the reason why I, I founded PATAS for atheists and agnostics. But believe me, a lot of people are coming in, they like our mission and vision. They are humanists and they are, um, some even are theists, but they like us, so they join us. So give me an example of some of the activities that you've done to make a difference and to educate people. Okay. We have humanistic activities. We, we fed a few people during the flood. We uh, were able to uh, donate a lot of a lot of uh, clothes and food to um, a community where they they were like burned uh, burned victims. So we were able to do that. We had two conventions already. One uh, last year in Manila, and the latest one uh, in August. I'm sorry, in June for the Asian Humanist Convention. So we have two already. And that is actually just to um, invite or, or make a come on to people to come out. I hope they will. It's a platform for people to come out. Do you think there are a lot of atheists in the Philippines who are just still in the closet? I am sure. You know why? There are a lot of LGBTs in the Philippines and a lot of LGBT advocates in the Philippines. But you know, being an atheist is like a stigma, so nobody really wants to come out. But I am sure there are a lot. Okay. Well, uh, is there anything else that you'd like to add? I thank Amer I am a member, I'm an active member of the American Atheists and, and, and a lot of a lot of organizations in the USA and I thank you very much for this opportunity. Okay, thanks. Uh, we were talking with Marissa and really appreciate your time. But he said shame on them for not participating in this movement. And I agree. But things I should say is great in a negative sense that happened to black people was when they told us to lean on the Lord, put all your problems, put your trust in God, and he'll provide all of your needs. You know what that did? That took us out the game. Because this is a highly competitive game. You cannot pray your way into being competitive. The, the point you made about basketball, we are scoring points for the other team right now. And where is the incentive to be productive when you say God is going to do it for you? We might as well just go home and pray about it and allow God to work his magic. But we serve a God, or they serve a God, that they ought to know by now doesn't intervene. We all prayed for a guilty verdict for Trayvon. He doesn't intervene. If there is a God, and I'm quoting somebody else, and I can't remember who it was, then us moral people, us intelligent people, we have an obligation to hunt his ass down and kill him. Because he's foul. Listen, if he has a personality, then he's foul. If he has a personality, now if you want to claim, you know, well, how did, how did all this get here? Well, now you're talking physics. 
Ask a physicist that. Don't ask a preacher that. Physics is the interconnection between matter and energy. Okay? Described by the laws of physics. So, you know, that's a question for the, for the physicists. But now if you're talking about, you know, life, I think some one of the speakers said there are some things that we never know, but I subscribe to creationism. It's a, I mean, to uh, evolution. It's a 150 year theory that has yet to be disproven. And if you really understand it, that you didn't come from a monkey, if you really take the time out to read about it and understand it before you judge it, you would know that, Steve Harvey. But, as you know, who are we? We're too humble to think that a God is specifically blessing us with personal favors. You see that field of grass out there? That's like one blade of grass out of trillions thinking that it's supposed to, that it's entitled to receive more sunlight and rain than the, than the blade of grass sitting right next to it. That's crazy. This is an exercise in insanity. Listen. We are too intellectually embarrassed, okay, to subscribe to a God who tells us that women came from a man's rib. We just can't do that. We're too, we're, you know, too embarrassed. We're too busy on Sunday to keep going to some charlatans saying the same thing over and over again. We're too embracing of diversity to worship a God who chooses one particular group over another group. That ought to turn you off. It says right there, I am the God of Israel. Don't say nothing about Africa. It tells you in it, but you don't read it. We're too realistic to believe that a God could actually have a son, who, by the way, was him in the flesh temporarily. And we're too secure and confident in ourselves to worship a God who's Thank jealous. So I mean, all of these things, okay? We, but see, we can be taken seriously. All the major networks ought to be here. CNN, everybody, they all ought to be here. Now, if this was a church rally, they'd be here. If this was a big old church rally with T.D. Jakes, T.D. Jakes come to Atlanta, you had all the news people there. They ought to be here right now, you know. So we hope you enjoyed those first few interviews from the Secular Blackout. I was certainly thrilled to be there. My entire staff had a great time. Uh, and stay tuned next week for part two of the Secular Blackout. Until then, we'll see you on Atheist Viewpoint, where reason reigns and reality rules. Knock, knock, get the sound from my door. You with the message from the Lord.
Soldier on my 